Good day, everyone. Daniel Fairless here, Porterville Smart Lab Director. So today, what I'm going to bring you is a Google Earth lesson and talk about la uh, latitude and longitude a little bit. Um, do a little exploring that you can do from home, from the safety of your own computer, um, and hopefully have a little fun. So without further ado, we're going to uh, get into the lesson. So first of all, uh, we have, a, like I said earlier, a Google Earth Lab. Um, we're going to be talking a little geography today, working with some coordinates, understanding latitude and longitude, um, exploring some points, seeing some things, and uh, making use of the uh, Google Earth app to do so. So um, we have an introduction here. We also have our directions, our requirements, which are basically just a computer with internet access, which if you're watching this, you have both of those, so you're good to go. Um, this first link right here is a, um, a more in-depth, I'm going to discuss and uh, explain a little bit about latitude and longitude and coordinates, but this video goes into a little further detail. So make sure that you check it out. I would suggest that you, uh, if you really um, don't feel super comfortable with uh, latitude and longitude, go ahead and give it a watch before you uh, dive into this lesson. And then the second link obviously is into Google Earth. One minute right here, I want to toggle my screen. Okay, so we have our uh, Google Chrome browser open. All we're going to do is type in to this address bar, Google Earth. Go ahead and hit enter. You should see a screen something similar to this. We're going to go to the first Google Earth. You don't have to download anything for this. It's going to pop up and you're going to be able to access Google Earth directly. So we're going to go down to the button here that says launch earth. We're going to click on that. Wait for it to load. There is earth. So first of all, we're going to be working primarily with this uh, search tab here on the left, as well as in the bottom right corner, you're going to see the latitude and longitude coordinates. So let's go into the search bar. Um, for the purposes of this uh, example, I'm going to type in Porterville College. Going to hit enter. We're going to zoom in to California, here into the valley, drop in, and there we are looking at Porterville College aerial view. <clears throat> now, if you look down here in the bottom, you're going to see bottom right corner, you're going to see 36 degrees, three minutes eight seconds north, that's the latitude. Um, when you're thinking about latitude, we start at the equator. Everybody uh, I think is familiar with the equator, that is zero degrees. And if you go above the equator, that's your northern hemisphere, all the coordinates will be north from that point forward. Um, the degrees are the uh, larger delineation. Um, then you have minutes. There's 60 minutes and one degree. We're at three minutes. And then the last and finest uh, graduation is seconds. And there's 60 seconds and one minute. So 60 seconds would make one more minute. And then 60 minutes would make one more degree. So that's our latitude. So running parallel to the equator. Lines going up, imaginary lines, of course. There's not real lines. 
and then we go on to lo uh, longitude. It's always latitude first, that's north and or south, and then we have um, longitude, which run perpendicular to the equator, um, starts at the prime meridian, which is, uh, runs through um, England, north and south, um, that's zero degrees. Anything to the left of that would be west, which we are. Um, to the east of that would be, uh, I mean, to the right of that would be east. So we're at 119 degrees, zero minutes, and 36 seconds west. All right, so you take those two points and cross them. That particular juncture is where Porterville College sits. Um, just for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm gonna go back to our search bar here. We're gonna type in the Sydney Opera House. And you can type anything that you'd like into that um, search tab and then we'll give you some options and then pop up. But now we're in Australia, so we went to the other side of the equator, to the southern hemisphere. So if you look down here on the right at our coordinates, you're going to see 33 degrees, 51 minutes, 12 seconds south latitude. So that tells us that we're below the equator. We're also at 151 degrees, 13 minutes, and 2 seconds east, so we are on the other side of that prime meridian and um, in the eastern longitude. So kind of uh, flip-flop what we were looking at when we were looking at Porterville College. So now if we go back to our Word document here, which actually has our lesson. Okay, I went over the directions and requirements. We scroll down a little bit. Um, there's an example page right there. Um, I've also, um, there's some questions in here. Just some things to help guide you a little bit through it so that you get to um, use the various, or some of the various features of Google Earth. Um, obviously, we can't go over all of them in here because there are quite a few, but um, some of the things I listed were enter your home address, what are the coordinates, so you're going to type in your address going to zoom in you're going to double check make sure that is your address you know a view of your address and then you're going to look at those coordinates in the bottom right and you're going to enter them here and we're also going to go to our school what are its coordinates and then I've added a couple other questions just just some easy things for you to just to kind of guide you along um, let you look at some different things some different views um, explore a little bit outside your world, like I said, from the safety of your computer. So home, school, and then we're gonna look at the elevation and coordinate location of the five tallest mountains in California. So if we toggle back over to our Google Earth page, whoops, wrong button. Get back in here real quick. No harm, no foul. I could just click on the other tab when we're already back in here, sorry. All right, so in the search bar right here, I'm going to type in tallest mountains, and I've already done it previously, um, in California. So if I click on that, it's going to give me a list of mountains right here. And if you look at the little red balloons, they're uh, tagging various mountains. So these mountains, I said to list the, the five tallest, don't necessarily go down the first five and put those in and say that that's it. So if we go down here to number five on our list, it says Mount Williamson. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to look at the little description that pops up, and it says Mount Williamson at 14,379 feet. It's the second highest mountain in both the Sierra Nevada range and the state of California. So even though it was number five over here on our search engine, it's also number two overall. So just make sure you're double checking as you go along, looking at the description. If you click on this Wikipedia link right here, it'll take you to another page. 
and give you a little bit more information usually so you can double check there. Also, if you look up here in the, on the top right, um, it already gives you your coordinates. So you can double check those with what you actually see when you click on it. They should be somewhat close. Um, they may not be exact depending on what spot you're pinpointing on the mountain, but uh, they should be close. So just something to be aware of as you're going along right here um, and finding the, the uh, different mountains, make sure that you're looking and double checking both your coordinates down here as well as what rank it is as far as mountains go. If you ever want to get rid of this, you can just close that and then you have your view here. You can also close this over here and see a, a full view of whatever it is that you're looking at. So have some fun, play with that a little bit. Look over, um, double check, look at some points. Feel free to explore this a little bit. You can look at any point anywhere. There's a, usually a satellite image of just about any place that you can imagine. Um, for instance, if I was on the search tab right here and I typed in Giza Pyramid, it's going to take us out, zoom out from the mountain. We're going to go across the globe, down into Egypt, and there is an aerial view of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Once again, with our coordinates, we're still in the Northern Hemisphere, but we are on the other side of that prime meridian, so we are in Eastern longitude. So always latitude first, North and South. Longitude second, East and West. So feel free and just kind of get an idea of mental picture in your mind of um, which way you're going, what hemisphere you're in. Um, you're in the east, you're in the west, um, just that sort of thing. So you can have some rough, I mean, you can see as the globe, as you travel from one point to the other, which direction you're traveling. So you, you have that kind of visual aid, but just something to be aware of as you're looking through this. So those five questions, I mean, it's just five. Um, it's just to help guide you a little bit. It's to kind of let you dip your toe into this Google Earth, but don't, don't feel limited to... Uh, just those five questions. Um, go ahead and explore. Talk about some places you, you've heard about, something you might want to see, um, a, a famous landmark, um, the Pyramid and Great Pyramid of Giza was one. Um, right here in our own state, I type in Yosemite National Park in California. Um, we get people from all over the world that travel just north of us. So I'm going to zoom back out. We're going to go around. We're going to drop it back into California. You're going to see we're up here in the Sierras and we're looking at Yosemite National Park. So lots of things to explore here. Half Dome is, is um, something that, uh, that people come to see to climb. There's a little picture or picture of it over here in the description. Um, so Lots of things to look at, lots of things that you could uh, plan a future trip to go see. But that's basically the gist of this particular lesson is we're just looking at, the, once again, these long latitude and longitude coordinates in the bottom down here, understanding what they mean, um, how they relate to each other, and how it... Uh, helps us to navigate our world. Speaking of navigating, we're gonna look at this little captain's wheel under here. It says Voyager. We're gonna click on that because this is one of the other features of, here, of uh, Google Earth. So there's a lot of little slide shows and these editor's picks. You can scroll down, you can look through all these. Um, talks about the 3D imagery, um, just different various topics. And then there's also some games to play. So I'm gonna go click on this games tab. And as you can see, various little quizzes you can take. Test your knowledge in a variety of areas. Um, and we're gonna dip into one here. I'm gonna jump into this animal calls and work through this one with you. Um, feel free to explore these on your own time. And wait for it and then uh, 
let's go. So they're going to give us an audio clip, which we're going to play right now. Which creature makes a sound when it's on the move? Options are a horse, a donkey, and a giraffe. And if you actually look back over at the globe, could give you a little bit of a clue if you know uh, your visual geography, what uh, different places look like, because we have a balloon already on the map. But we're going to listen to this. All right, so we played the audio tab, so I'm going to give you a second to make your guess, and then I'm going to make mine, and we're going to see how we do. I'm going to click on a horse. I believe that's a horse. All right. So we're going to jump down into here. We're jumping into Italy, and it says visitors to the natural regional park of Monte Lucretili. And the Italian countryside might just see horses roaming along the path. So I'm going to assume that those are wild horses that you might see if you were in that particular part of the world. But for the time being, we're going to click on next. Which pack animal makes this guttural cry? So we're going to listen to this. Very good audio that they have with this. And our options for this one are a llama, a camel, or a yak. I'll give you a second to make your guess. I believe I'm going to go with camel. All right, it says this sound was made by a dromedary, the camel species with only one hump. They are shown here near the city of Arad in Israel. So, we're outside Israel in the desert, and there you see some camels. Once again, the dromedary, which has one hump. There are also two hump camels, but that particular cry was made by the one hump version. All right, we're going to click on next. Which wild animal makes a grunting noise like this? So if you look, we're just south. This would be Florida right here. This is the United States, North America that we're looking at. We're down here just to the south and east of it. So that might give us a clue, but we're gonna listen to this noise. All right, so our options are pig, koala, and aardvark. So if you, know a little zoology that might give you a clue um, when you combine it with this balloon over here but I'm going to go with pig. It says while they're not native to the area the swimming pigs of Pig Beach on Big Major Cay in the Bahamas are a popular tourist attraction. So we're down in the Bahamas and we're looking and we see wild pigs swimming in the ocean, enjoying the sunshine. Very nice. All right, we're going to click on next. Okay, this chattering sound is made by which Antarctic native? So if you look, this is the continent of Antarctica. Another thing to take note of, if you look at the bottom at the coordinates as I'm moving around here, you see them jumping all around. So those are various points and coordinate points in Antarctica. And I can even click in on this balloon, give us a rough idea of where we're at in the southern latitude, eastern longitude. So we're in the southern hemisphere, east of that prime meridian. and this chattering sound. I'm gonna go with a, we have a fur seal, a snow petrel, which would be this bird in the middle, and the penguin. I'm going to click on penguin. Zooming in, Antarctica, there you go. We have these petite penguins are found along much of the Antarctic coast. 
and were named by a French explorer after his wife. So there you go. There's, there's a picture of some penguins. I'm going to go ahead and click on next, see where we're headed. Which prettily, prettily patterned creature makes this sound when it eats? So we have an okapi, a zebra, or a giraffe. So let's listen to the sound. Hmm. All right. So I got a little clue from the, uh, the sound that I'll explain to you here in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and let you make your guess. And then I'm going to click on mine. I'm going to go with the giraffe and I'll explain why. So it's a reticulated giraffe shown here makes his home in Kenya's Lua Wildlife Conservancy. All right. So the reason I chose giraffe was I heard leaves crunching. Sounded like if you were walking over some dry leaves. So um, leaves obviously grow up in trees. So for me, that kind of ruled out the first two animals. I mean, possibly they could reach some of the lower leaves, but I just thought it was more likely that we were listening to a giraffe. And according to this, we were right. Go ahead and click on next. Still staying in the continent of Africa. And it says, the call heard here comes from which member of the primate family? So we have a chimpanzee, a ring-tailed lemur, or a gibbon. So let's listen to that. Give you a second to make your guess. And I'm going to go with a chimpanzee. All right. Chimpanzees are closely related to humans, and the two shown here are part of the family Jane Goodall studied in the Gombe National Park. Go ahead and click on next. So where are we headed? This low booming call comes from which bird? Once again, if we look at our balloon, we're still in Africa, which might give us a clue. No, no. Our options are a prairie chicken, an ostrich, or a barred owl. Whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. I was going to click on ostrich. My mouse was a little sensitive, but it's okay. The largest living bird on the planet, the ostrich, is also one of the fastest. If the birds shown here in South Africa were startled, they could speed away at 72 kilometers, about 45 miles per hour. And I didn't even get to listen to the sound. I apologize. Like I said, I clicked on it, but it's okay. Not a big deal. Now, this otherworldly sound is made by which aquatic animal? So we have a, man, a mantis, actually should be manatee, I believe, but anyways, um, beluga whale or a sea lion. So let's listen to this before I actually click on anything. Now, if you look, uh, once again, we're in the North American con continent, um, looking like we're on the west coast of the United States according to this balloon so that might give you a little bit of a clue so I'm going to give you a second to make your guess and then I am going to click on sea lion once again I used my clue there with the balloon and saw that we were off the coast of California here and it says sea lions are a frequent site on the docks of Pier 39 in San Francisco so um, Manatees are on the uh, East Coast, Florida, and such. Um, blue whales are further north, so I believe that it was going to be a sea, sea lion. Click back right here because I think I am. Whoops, maybe I just click X. There we go. My apologies. 
still getting used to this myself, still doing a little bit of exploring in Google Earth myself. So here we go. We're going to click on the uh, next. Question nine of nine. All right, we made it to the end. Which feathered creature makes this warbling call? We have a wild turkey, a greater flamingo, and a trumpeter swan. Let's listen to it. Okay, so we have a little context clue besides the sound itself. We're back over in the continent of Africa. So that should give you some clues. I'm going to give you a second to make your guess. I'll make mine. We'll see how we do. I'm going to click Greater Flamingo. And we were right. Flamingos get their pink hue from the carotenoid pigments in the food they eat. So it's actually from the food they eat that they get that pink color that we think about when we think about flamingos. The black wings on these birds actually identify them as greater flamingos. So if I click on the plus down here, we can zoom in. You can see the black on the wings. The picture is zoomed out just a little bit. But there we go. Click on the score. We're an ace adventurer. It says we're knowledgeable about much of the planet, but there's always more to learn, which I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, there always is more to learn. So you can, uh, I encourage you to learn as much as you can. Um, we'll go back to the Voyager here. Games. There's all kinds of education tab. There's a nature tab. There's a layer. Just take some time, explore this, do some of these quizzes, have a little fun, learn a little bit, see a little bit. Um, some different views of the world, some different things that you can see in the world, um, where they're at, where they're located. Um, once again, always paying attention to these coordinates down here in the bottom. Always latitude first, north or south, followed by the longitude, east or west. Um, degrees come first. Then we have minutes. There's going to be 60 minutes and one degree. Um, then we have seconds as our finest graduation, and there's 60 seconds in a minute. So you can see how it narrows it down to a very particular spot. So I hope you've enjoyed this little lesson. Um, I encourage you, like I said, to look through the description and the Word document that's going to be attached to this, um, answer those questions. Um, definitely encourage you to not stop there, to go ahead and explore with this uh, Voyager, um, some of the other things, um, just explore some various points in your with um, the search tab on your own, things that you might want to see in particular. Um, have a little fun with it. But that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I had fun making it. Um, it's one of my first tries at this. So it's going to get better, hopefully a little smoother. But um, I uh, hope you enjoyed this lesson anyways. So until the next one, um, have fun, stay safe, and don't stop learning.